What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to do with you guys. This is the PMP Knives Revenge. Uh, this knife became popular here, I don't know if I want to say recently, but basically I think the knife that grabbed everybody's attention was the PMP Beast. I've mentioned that knife before. Um, that is a monstrously overbuilt folding knife. Uh, with a, is it like a third of an inch thick on the blade stock? I mean, it's just massive, like humorously massive, obviously meant more as a novelty, but it was kind of in the wrong place in time. It would have been extremely popular in 2012, 2013, considering how overbuilt it was. It's also made in China, making the price on it substantially less than a lot of those really popular American made overbuilt knives of that time. Uh, but anyways, uh, I don't know that everybody or anybody really expected them to make a design that was um, thinner and, you know, more, just more appropriate for EDC. And that combined with the fact that they just seemed, in my, from my perspective, they seemed to just come out of nowhere. This PMP Revenge also seemed to just come out of nowhere. Um, before we get too far into this, I have finally upgraded my phone. I was rocking the Galaxy S8 Plus forever, and I have upgraded to the Galaxy S10 Plus. I have no idea if you guys are experiencing any visual or audible differences. Um, it does seem to be taking really good quality video right now. I have no idea. Let me know in the comments section. I'm happy with it. We're moving on either way. So this knife was provided to me uh, by Mr. Harry Gage, who is... Um, a legendary knight on my Patreon. If you'd like to check out my Patreon, just follow the link in the description. Um, I also have Instagram. You can follow me at metal underscore complex. Anyways, Harry Gage provided me this knife and some other amazing knives this week for review. So thank you so much. I am so glad that you gave me the opportunity to look at this one. I have a lot to say about it. And it would have, you know, I was basically just aware that it existed. I was like, yep, that's a knife. It's made by those people who made that monstrous thing, whatever. But uh, my opinions have changed dramatically after having handled this. So, anyways, let's go ahead and get some measurements on the PNP Revenge. Overall length of this guy, not a small knife. It's coming in at just under 9 inches, which honestly is surprising. It feels smaller than that. Between 8.75 and 9 inches, possibly 9 inches on the dot. Let's go ahead and move this down here and do a size comparison with the Ontario Rat Model 1. Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 inches overall, so you can see there, still bigger than the Rat 1. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall. How about up against the Ritter Hogue, or in this case, or the, the Benchman Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Ritter Hogue coming in at eight inches overall. And last but not least, how about the Spyderco Delica? Delica coming in at seven inches overall. So we have established this is definitely a big knife. How about the action? Does the is the action good on this guy? Yes, the action is quite smooth. Whether you use the flipper tab or you do the forward thumb flick or you decide to do, which in my opinion is the best way to deploy it, the reverse flick. Oh my gosh, awesome reverse flick on this guy. Big fan of that. I, I wasn't expecting that. For whatever reason, that slot just did not look like something that would be friendly with your hand. It's also really smooth. I mean, it's not perfectly fall shut, but I mean, just with a few wiggles, just a, a few wiggles, it's going to fall. And the detent's nice. I mean, gosh, it's a really impressive action. It is running on bearings. I don't know if we can see in there. Um, some really impressive, uh, impressive stuff, definitely. Let's go ahead and get a weight on this guy. Overall weight of the PMP Revenge coming in at 6.49 ounces, which is right there at the peak for me in terms of carry preference on weight, 6.46 ounces. So you guys know that I prefer, not will accept, but prefer to carry knives between the four and a half and six and a half ounce mark. Now, not everybody is like me. A lot of people don't like to carry any knife that's over four ounces. This is solid titanium. The scales are not milled on the inside. If we take a look in there, you can see these blue anodized scales are um, completely solid. That combined with the fact that it is a big knife overall and has a big blade, it's no surprise that it weighs about six and a half ounces. It's about the same weight as a full titanium Hinder XM18. Um, with the unmilled scales. 
So this knife uh, currently is, at, and I mean at the time of this video. Again, if you're watching this video a year in the future, I have no idea if it's available. But right now, if you're looking at this and you're like, I want that. He sounds enthusiastic about it. I don't need to hear the rest of the review. I want to buy that. You can buy this blue anodized version and you can buy the uh, bronze anodized version at Blade HQ for $199 or call it $200. There was a full tumbled version as there usually is and then there was also a completely blacked out version which those two are no longer, well, they're not in stock at the moment. I don't know if they plan to be, you know, to, to restock on those or if there'll be more in the future. And I don't know if the black one costs a little bit more. Generally, you pay a little bit more for DLC. Um, but you can buy these for $200 right now. This is a knife that's made in China, but you are looking at a kind of a light, very fine grain tumbled M390 sheep's foot style blade. Um, you can see their PMP Revenge M390 158 of 350. The fact that it's numbered makes me think that these will not continuously be available, which is very, very sad. Um, this is this is a knife that I'm going to have fun talking about with you guys. Um, first off, the blade shape here is just magnificent. This is this is the most magnificent looking and, I mean, just a combination of a, a blade that looks good and functions well as a sheep's foot style blade. Some people will call this Horncliffe. I'll call it a sheep's foot. I think they just nailed it here. You've got the uh, flat mixed with a, it's not really a swedge. It's just the chamfering up there at the top. Then the swedge is down here, down the nose, if you will, of the blade down to the tip. The tip is just point enough to get some of those digging tasks done, but you still have the traditional you know, strength of this style of blade. You have ever so slight belly. Not, not a perfect razor blade, it's not like a Warncliffe. Just slight belly, making some of those slicing tasks really, really nice. The blade stock thickness is not crazy. In fact, it's pretty thin. I wanna say it's probably, yeah, about the same as the Ritter Hogue. It looks to be about 125 thousandths, meaning that all that room to drop towards the cutting edge starts at about 80% the height of the blade and you get not not laser beam thin but pretty darn thin behind the edge. It feels good. This is a very functional working edge. I really like that. I also really like visually how they did the opening here for the thumb stud. This is excellent. Whether you're somebody who likes to, despite me failing it, uh, deploy it like this um, or you like to deploy it with your rear finger, which I'm, I'm telling you, that's the way to do it. This is set up for that. That's just awesome. I love doing the reverse flick, so that's great. It, of course, does have the flipper tab. We'll talk about here, that here in a sec, but man, that rear deployment's good. I like that they just added that little notch there. It doesn't add anything functionally. It just looks nice. It kind of looks like an eye, like it's looking back at you. <laughs> that's weird. Maybe some people are like, why'd you tell me that? Now I'm not going to be able to get it out of my head. But anyways, real nice, and they do a good job of not putting too much on the blade. PMP Revenge M390 158 to 350. I can take that. That's fine. Don't mind the font. Don't mind the look of it. It's great. On the show side, there's nothing on there. Beautiful stonewash finish. Everything is symmetrical. Really, really nice. Moving down to the, actually, let me point this out. It's shouldered, so the contact with the stop pin is all the way around, meaning it should slow wear down over time on the lock bar interface. Moving down to the scales, um, these are the blue anodized scales. You can see there, uh, light tumbling on there. You can, of course, get bronze, and like I said, plain, and then black. Um, you have the show side pivot, which it looks like a whale tail. I don't, is it something else? I don't know. It looks nice. It's nicely polished. Um, I don't have a problem with that. Moving down to the handle scales, you have extremely similar to Hinder XM18 handle screws. Like, Almost exactly the same thing. Same look, same size. I imagine they're a little bit different, but really, really close to the same thing. You've got a really nicely done bas uh, backspacer that kind of raises to make room for this lanyard hole here. You can easily get some 550 through there. Um, really nice how they set that in there. Just very, I mean, this is a precision made tool. It's not, there's no part of this that's sloppy. It's really nice. This is a super plain Jane and slippery pocket clip that. You know, it doesn't have like the, the scoop that I like that you see on, well, that's an aftermarket clip, uh, the Ritter Hogue or like the, um, the Rad doesn't have that scoop, but you know what? 
It goes with the knife. It's not a dainty little thing. I like it. It's got a single screw on there. It's got good retention. There's no play in it. It's just nice. I like that. That's cool. I also like that it's not the same color as the scales. Same with the backspacer. You have contrast between the blade, the pivot, the screws, the backspacer, and the pocket clip. That's really nice. It is only uh, mountable on the right side, so for right hand tip up carry. For me, that's fine. For other people, not so much. I don't know if they make a left-handed version of this knife. I don't think so. So that's just the way that it is. Um, you do have a steel lock bar insert that doubles as the over-travel stop. You can see there we're locking up at, I don't know, 40%, something like that. The centering on this guy is perfect. It didn't come perfect, but that's probably because Harry's been flipping it. I gave it just a little bit of torque with a uh, uh, torque set um, driver and got it tightened down. Um, no blade play whatsoever, locks up perfectly solid, and I'm still getting this awesome, super smooth wiggle shut action. Really, really impressive. That tells me that the tolerances on this thing are just amazing. No movement on the blade inside the handle, that's what I like to see. You know, I talked about that on the, um, on the Tasso, how, you know, I couldn't get it tightened down just right to where I was getting the action that I wanted and getting the solidity in the blade that I wanted, both in the locked out position and in the... Uh, the sheathed position, I guess, if you will. Um, this is just absolutely solid. And that's generally the case with titanium frame locks that are running on bearings. They, they get, they have that seat sweet spot if the tolerances are just right. This, it just feels really good all the way around. Um, I, I have no complaints whatsoever in the finish, fit and finish department. You know, when I opened this up and I got it out and I looked at it and I flipped it, you could see it on the unboxing. I was like, oh yeah, cool. Okay. That's pretty neat and then that was it it wasn't like you know you guys have seen me unbox a knife that i that i just lock on to immediately like the spider coast shaman the first time i opened that up and i i picked that thing up and unlocked it and it was like bam somebody hit me in the face with a sledgehammer you know i love that this knife i didn't get that impression immediately but after playing with this not only do i like it i love this knife this knife carries and feels like a knife that's only about eight inches, maybe eight and a quarter inches. It's not until I actually put a smaller knife down next to it that I realized, wow, this thing's a lot bigger than it looks. And it's because the blade and scales aren't tremendously thick. But I, for me, this is good. I still get that feeling of like heft and solidity because this knife is big and solid. I like that. That combined with the overall look I like the look of the handle. I like the look of the blade. I like the how it deploys, how it feels. There's no double clutch. You know, when it when this falls and the flipper tab touches your thumbnail, it's well past the detent ball. So it's easy to get around all that stuff. It's it's really, really easy to manipulate. As far as ergonomics go, one of those situations where it's kind of a blank canvas, you have a large handle, it's easy to get your hands in there. There's no forward choil, and this area back here kind of it makes you position all four fingers into this spot. You you know, there's no like lines in here forcing each individual finger to fall into a certain place, but your hand is gonna fall between here and here, and that locks it in really well, despite the handle being really smooth, you know? That oftentimes is what you need uh, if you're gonna do a really smooth handle, especially if you're not gonna have jimping up here or anything to really lock you in. You can comfortably rest your thumb up there. You know, if you were gonna bear down on this knife, you'd be just fine. Honestly, the shape of the handle is gonna lock you in just fine. I wish there was some jimping up there, but I, I don't really feel like I need it all that much. I'm very happy with it ergonomically. I don't have any complaints. Um, honestly, guys, this is gonna be a pretty easy review. I have but one complaint about this knife all the way around. I Truthfully, this thing is darn near perfect, and I never thought that this knife would you know, get me riled up. I, I honestly didn't think I would love this thing so much. There's only one thing that I don't like, and it's not a deal breaker. The flipper tab is really short and really pointy. So the fact that it's short makes it, I'm not gonna say the detent's bad. The de It's got a nice medium detent. I'll give you an example here. It's got a nice medium detent. It's perfect for flipping it out in the reverse. It's not one of those knives that's easily gonna shake out. You know, you can do the thumb flick, whatever, and you can even, without wrist, you can flip it. The problem is, is it's just a little bit pointy. So flipping it over and over and over again is really gonna bother your finger. The landing zone is perfectly fine. In fact, they've carved it out a little bit, so it's a little bit more comfortable. But it's just a little bit sharp. You know, honestly, I don't think this knife needed the flipper tab in the first place. One of two things needed to happen. 
The flipper tab needed to either be, uh, it well, number one, it needed to be extended, uh, no matter what. Uh, and number two, it needed to be sharpened, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, doled down a little bit. Um, that would make it uh, absolutely perfect. Your other option, or their other option, would have been to just not have it at all. Because honestly, I could do just fine pinch opening it like this, doing the, well, doing the thumb flip. But most of the time, I just spider coat flick it. Do the reverse flick. It is literally just as easy to do that. And you can see I missed it there and it still went all the way out. But it is just as easy to do that as it is with the Spyderco PM2. It's really, really easy. I love that I could do without the flipper tab. But I know most people kind of like to have that flipper tab in combination with the, the hole. Um, and so for that reason, I think that I think the flipper tab should have just been a hair longer and just, just rounded off a little bit better. And then after that, perfection. This is an awesome knife. For those of you who like to carry a big knife, but you don't really want a massive footprint in terms of overall space taken up in your pocket, I think this is a, I think this is a great knife. I mean, take a look at it folded up versus the PM2. And we're at an angle here, so the PM2 should actually look quite a bit smaller from this angle. I'll show you what I mean. Flipping them around here, putting the PM2 up front, look how much bigger it looks. Uh -uh. The PM2 is nowhere near the same size as the PMP Revenge. The PM2 is 8.3 inches overall, and the Revenge is like 9 inches. So you're getting a lot of knife in terms of overall space. Now, weight, on the other hand, you're looking at 6.5 ounces versus what? 3.8? What's the PM2? 3.8 ounces, something like that. But if you're okay with 6.5 ounces, you like full tie, you like bearings, you like a sheep's foot blade, and you like a, you like a knife that has a good fidget factor but also has dependability when it comes to deployment and manipulation, this is it. At $199 for full titanium bearings, M390, excellent fit and finish, excellent build quality, oh, all day. I'm not even going to say the usual thing where I'm like, it would be really nice if you have knocked it down to $170. I'm not even going to do that. $200 is a fair deal for this. I love this knife. It's awesome. Not only this, is this knife going to go on my most recommended knives playlist, um, it's also going to go on my favorite knives of all, all time playlist. It's good and it brings me joy. I love it. I can't stop playing with it. Harry, this is a sweet piece, man. I'm really, really happy that you let me take a look at it. Honestly, though, guys, I think that's about all I can say. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like. If you'd like to check, take a look at my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So take, uh, take a look at that stuff. And if you enjoy all my content, then please subscribe to my channel because there is definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody. And have a great day.